That is actually really nice. It's like somewhere between a very dense rye bread and a piece of molasses date cake. It has a nice texture to it. It's like really dense and very chewy. Greetings everybody. So recently I posted a video about my trip to Iceland where I tried bread that was baked using the earth. So what they do is they make a bread, uh, they put it inside a, well, a number of different things, and they bury it underground and then the heat from the earth, because Iceland is full of so much geothermal energy, that heat cooks the bread. So what I'm going to do today is try to replicate this using an oven. This takes all the fun away from it, I know, but it'll be at least a similar flavor to the rye bread that is, that is made in Iceland. Typically, bread that is cooked with the earth is done over a very long time, uh, depending on, well, where you live and how much uh, heat is in the earth, <laughs> it can take anywhere from like 8 hours to 24 hours. So to try to replicate that, I'm going to set my oven really, really low, okay? It's going to be at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature you use if you want to like dry out some like orange rind or something. But I'm going to keep it at that temperature for a long period of time and that should kind of mimic what the earth is doing. Although I'd love to take credit for this recipe, it's not my idea. The recipe I'm following actually comes from an Icelandic cookbook. So this is a way for people who really want this bread and they want it done in the same sort of way how they can replicate it using their own ovens. Okay, so this recipe calls for some ingredients that are not so easy to find in the US, so um, I will maybe mention a few substitutions along the way, but uh, you don't want to ruin it either. So uh, if you can use the actual ingredients, use the actual ingredients. This here is dark rye flour. I wouldn't substitute this one because it is a rye bread. You're gonna need rye flour. And this calls for one, two, three cups. Next, something not too hard to find. This is whole wheat flour. One cup and a half. Next, baking powder. Four, Four teaspoons. teaspoons. Salt. We're going to do one and a half. Baking soda, one teaspoon. Okay, here's another one that you might not be able to find depending on where you live. This is buttermilk. It actually took me going to four different grocery stores before I was able to find this. And uh, I live in New York City, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised how difficult it was to find this. Uh, if you really can't find it, then you can use a substitute. Usually what people do is they take one cup of milk and add one tablespoon of vinegar per cup of milk. So in this case, this calls for two cups. You would put two cups of regular milk plus uh, two tablespoons of vinegar. Is that as good? No. If you can find buttermilk, definitely use buttermilk. But if you can't, I won't tell anybody. Yeah, it's gross. I've come across a couple people in my life who actually will drink a glass of buttermilk. <laughs> Last but not least, I have a can of Lyle's Golden Syrup. This is the most difficult thing to find, at least for me. I had to order this online. I couldn't find it anywhere, not at any grocery stores. And uh, if you look online, some people will replace this with molasses or they will replace it with a uh, golden corn syrup. That is not the same thing. That is going to taste completely different than this here. I think golden corn syrup is probably going to be a little bit closer. Definitely not molasses because molasses is going to give you a, a very molasses-y sort of taste. This does not taste like molasses. Okay, so what this is as far as I understand it, is a product that is made from uh, something that comes from the natural process of making sugar. This is an invert sugar. If you 
don't have this, and if you don't want to be bothered to order it online, you can make it. You can make it by taking sugar and water and kind of like cooking it down into uh, like a thick, simple syrup. I believe you might need to put some acid in it as well, a little bit of like lemon juice or something. And if you try to make it, it also is not the same as this, but it is going to be closer to this than uh, corn syrup or uh, molasses. Let's see, this is in like a, almost like a small paint can. I'm using my measuring spoon to prop it open. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna actually uh, try a little bit of this just on its own. Oh yeah, that is really good. It tastes like caramel, like a liquid caramel. One thing with this, it's very, very sweet. I'd say like, ounce by ounce, it is much sweeter than sugar itself. It's like concentrated sugar. Hmm. It calls for one cup. The consistency of this is like honey. It's very, very thick. And I won't lie to you, I've never used this before. But uh, I have seen it used before, like on cooking shows. I just like never have had a reason to buy it until today. Okay, we're gonna take the wet and add it to the dry. Well then, um, <laughs> I think the recipe I'm following didn't really do the proper conversion, or maybe the flour I'm using is too fine or something. This is just turned into a big mass, and it says to pour it into a loaf pan, so I'm guessing this is, uh, too thick. So I actually had to add one extra cup of buttermilk to this, and I looked at a couple other recipes and uh, they called for more liquid than the one I was following. So I think the one that I was following is wrong. And it's repeated online a lot, so um, yeah, I think it's it, the measurements on it just like did not translate from metric or something. So yeah, three cups, not two. Okay, so what I have right here is a large pot, and I'm going to bake my bread in this pot. If you look at recipes for making the, uh, the Icelandic thunder bread, it very often has you use just kind of like what's around, like either a coffee can, I've seen it done with like plastic buckets, cookie tin, I saw regular loaf pans. You could use a lot of different things. <laughs> to make this. Uh, I'm gonna use this because I, I think this will be a, a good size for it. I'm gonna take a stick of butter and I'm just going to liberally coat it. Well, my hands are already messy. I might as well get in there. I'm just gonna try to get all the corners. That way it'll be easy to get out. And then the dough. Next, I'm going to cover this with tin foil. So this goes in the oven for eight hours. Eight entire hours. So the idea is that this is going to be cooking it really low, really slow, similar to how the earth does it. So um, I'll see you tonight. Well, it has been eight long hours, and I've got to tell you, this has been hell because this smells so good, and I've just been like waiting so I can eat it. So finally, I'm gonna eat it. Let's get it out of the oven. Ooh, yeah, like having the tinfoil on here means that this is kind of like steaming. It's not really baking as much as it is like steaming the bread. Maybe a bit of both. But yep, yeah, that, that worked. There we go. This thing is heavy. This is a very dense bread. 
think I probably should wait a little bit for it to cool down, but I'm not going to. It looks a lot like the bread that I had when I was in Iceland. That's um, pretty close. Maybe not exactly the same, you know, since it was not baked with the earth, but um, a close approximation for sure. I don't have the amazing Icelandic butter, but uh, this will just have to do. This is really good. It's not exactly like the one that I had in Iceland. The flavors are a little bit different, but it's pretty close. You can definitely taste the fact that this has golden syrup in it because it does have not just like a, a rye bread taste. It has like this caramel sort of flavor to it. I don't know if it really needs to be cooked at a low temperature for such a long time, but the fact that it is not just like baked bread, that it is, it is something kind of between baking and steaming, I can see why it's done that way. Some people do this uh, in a slow cooker also and get like a similar result. So I think you need to do it this way, which is extremely time consuming, but it is worth it. This is something very special, very tasty, and um, yeah, uh, once again, because this has a reputation of giving you some thunder when you eat it, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to be careful with this because it is quite good. I can happily eat like a quarter of that bread like right now. Just going to eat this for now, and um, this has been fun. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Before you click out, I'd like to give a shout out to Smarter Every Day. Smarter Every Day is a mega patron over on Patreon.com. Patreon.com, if you haven't heard about it, it's how I afford to keep making this channel. It's how I afford to make all these videos and also how I afford to feed this small animal right here. So if you've enjoyed my videos and if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the link in the description below. Uh, if you don't want to do Patreon, I also have t-shirts available. There's a link to that in the description below as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.